Okay, let's review on how to name a compound from a given formula. And to do that, let's use a few examples. Let me start off with the first one here. And let's take this formula, uh, Cu3PO42. Okay, the first step you want to do is to just name the formula that is given as a type 1 compound. We're not going to worry initially whether it really is a type 1 or type 2 or type 3. Just name it as a type 1 compound. So we can see the two pieces here. We have this piece, which is copper, and this moiety here, this piece, which is phosphate. So let's name those. Copper, phosphate. Okay. This compound is now named as a type 1 name. The second thing you want to determine is you want to identify the true type of the compound. That is to say, is it a type 1, is it a type 2, or is it a type 3? How do you do that? Well, it's very simple. You determine if it's a type 1 by determining if it has a metal, and if that metal is a type 1 metal, then you're going to use the type 1 rule. Recall from class what a type 1 metal is. It's any metal in group 1 or group 2 or those 6 that you were shown near that corner of the, uh, the right corner of the metals portion of the table near the stair step, which we refer to as the six pack because there were six chemicals there. So you can see copper is not one of those, so it must be a type two. So, but by the way, if this had been a type one compound, you would stop here because if it's a type one, and you've already named it as a type 1, then what, what you do then is just very simply, you stop what you're doing. You just stop. Right. Okay. Let's now assume that you go through your analysis, and this is, in fact, you determine that it's a type 2, and indeed, this is a type 2. Copper is a metal. A type 2 is a metal plus a, a type 2 metal plus a non-metal. And copper is a type 2 metal because it, it is a metal and it doesn't fall in the type 1 metal regions. So we assume by default it's a type 2. So what does the type 2 rule mean you do? You owe a Roman numeral to the name. You place parentheses. So the first thing I'm going to do then is now that I recognize that is a type 2, the very first thing that I do is to place parentheses here. Now what do I need to do? I need to figure out what goes in that parentheses. And I already know that what goes in the parentheses is this Roman numeral. How do I determine that Roman numeral? Okay, how you determine that Roman numeral is from that around the bend technique that I showed you. So let's kind of go over that again. So we've determined that our formula is Cu3PO42. The prize here what you're trying to accomplish is to figure out this number that goes with copper. That is the oxidation number. That is the charge. So the Roman numeral is, and this is critical that you remember this, that the Roman numeral is equal to 
the charge on the metal. That is what that represents. And that's what we're trying to find out now. So, having said that, let's use our around the bin technique. We know one thing is for sure true. And that is, this whole compound is charge neutral. That means the sum of the positive piece and the sum of the negative piece is going to have to sum to zero. Okay. Why do we know it? How do we know that has zero charge? Because if you look on the compound as it's drawn, no charge was shown. Therefore, it must sum to zero. So let's figure out what they are. So here you know the subscripts. This is given. What you don't know are the oxidation numbers of the charges. But we do know what it is for phosphate. It's a minus 3. That's the charge on a phosphate group. As an aside, that's a totally different story. But how you know that, as a quick review, is that this you know as a derivative of H3PO4. And this is phosphoric acid. And ic acids lose, when it loses these three, it becomes a three minus. And that ic acid becomes what is known as phosphate. And that's the anion that you see here. Okay, so with that, so you should recognize that as a polyatomic anion from that. Right, so with that as a background, I have a, each phosphate group has a minus three charge. I have two of them, so the total negative charge is minus six. Therefore, what minus 6 equals 0? It has to be 6. 3 times what equals 6? It's 2. It is this 2 that goes there. The only difference is you now have to do this in the form of a Roman numeral 2. So, let's put, get our colors back right so we have this right. This 2. This Roman numeral 2 means I have... A 2, I'm going to rewrite the charge right there only as a Roman numeral. And there you have it. So, that's how you name a type 1. That's how you name a type 2. And this was a fairly difficult one. So, this is what? Copper 2 phosphate. Okay, what I would like to do right quickly is conclude this video by going over a quick type 3. And let's say it's something like this, N2O5. First thing you do is name it as a type 1. Nitrogen oxide. Yes, a type 1. That's a nitrogen. That's an oxide. If it's a type 3, what is your rules? It has nothing to do whatsoever with Roman numerals. But you do have to modify the type 1 name that you've already done. And you do that by using a prefix. You have to add a prefix. And the prefix is going to go there. And it's going to go in front of each of these moieties. And one in front of the positive moiety. And one in front of the negative moiety or negative piece. And all you're going to put there is the prefix that corresponds to the number of the subscript. Yes? So in this case, it's going to be dinitrogen. Dinitrogen pentoxide. Dinitrogen pentoxide. And I will remind you that the only exception to that is if the, if the positive moiety, if this first piece is mono, then you would not put mono. And finally, for example, this material right here would not be monocarbon dioxide. It would just be what? Carbon 
name it as a type 1 oxide. You recognize it as a type 3. Why is it a type 3? Because it has no metal. And this is the only one of your three choices that has no metal for the positive moiety. So this is type 3. It means you need to add a prefix. So this is going to be dioxide, but what's this going to be? It's just going to be carbon, not carbon monoxide. Because the first element listed can have any prefix except mono. And with that, that's a brief overview of how to name, uh, give the name to a formula.